Welcome to the Gym and Tonic podcast episode eight with me, Tim Chase. And today I'm joined by Mr. Mike Kelly. How are you doing, Mike? I'm very well, thank you, Tim. I'm very well. Yeah, it's good to see you. I, didn't, I haven't seen you today, have I? No, it's been a very long time without seeing each other. Probably about 12 hours, so. Yeah. You um, miss me? I have, mate. I don't know if anybody else has said this. You look like you're sitting on the throne um, from Game of Thrones. It looks well, like a throne. It's good. I've got a few options, but yeah, as, a, as you probably can tell, I'm at my parents' house, so it's, a, it's an interesting selection of a He looks regal. Yeah, the other option is loads of paintings of cows and windmills. So, I mean, look, that's the sort of that's what we're putting up with, mate. So, yeah, is what it is, mate. Is what it is. So, do you want to tell everyone who you are and uh, what you do? Okay, what do I do? First and foremost, I'm a, a personal trainer, um, coach. Um, probably say a coach rather than a personal trainer. Um, that's my day job. Uh, so I look after a client base uh, in Croydon of one-to-one -one clients. I have like one online client. It's not something that I really market at the moment. Um, I like being in front of people. I like having that human connection. I like seeing people. I like being in front of people. So I look after a range of clients. I don't really have a niche. Um, <clears throat> I don't particularly look after many people that are really, really super focused on aesthetics. Um, I look after a range of people ranging, ranging from uh, 21 year olds all the way up to 74 uh, year olds. So I've got a real wide range of clients. Um, so that's the day job. Um, I think you described me as a model on Instagram. Very flattering. Game of versus uh, model. Stole that straight off your Instagram. Yeah. Um, multiple pro card holder. Uh, Pro champion, amateur champion, reigning, I think people forget that, reigning UK <laughs> pro champion. Undefeated. Un un undefeated, um, <laughs> thanks to COVID. One good thing to come out of COVID is that nobody can take my title away because they haven't had a, a championship and I haven't been beaten. That's a run, mate. And if you retire now, that's it, undefeated. Undefeated, that's it. Um, so, yeah, fitness model. Um, a lot of injuries from past sporting escapades, so I'm limited now to standing in a pair of pants. Um, that's about all my body can tolerate, standing there, naked, almost naked. Um, fiance to my fiance, Soph, dog owner to my sausage dog. <laughs> um, and that's me, really. That's it. To you yeah. in a nutshell. Um, Very small so nutshell. You... Uh... You briefly mentioned the different clients that you kind of work with. Is there any particular clients that you tend to attract? I know you haven't got a niche, but is there anyone who took to gravitate towards the uh, bearded pro gamer fitness model? If not a type of client, I think people are aware of how I manage my clients, and um, I do have a vested interest in mental health, which I think we'll go on and talk a little bit about later. Um, so I do approach, uh, my approach comes from a, a huge level of empathy. Um, and I think that's something you might not find from a physique coach, as I'm sure you've probably found. Yeah, um, very black and white. It's black and white, yes. Yeah, it's, it's binary. It's like, okay, you eat that, you get that result. You go on that Stairmaster, you get that result. Um, and the sort of clients I work with and that I want to work with um, I can't do that. I don't, I'm not afforded that luxury um, of saying, if you do this, this will happen. Um, so the clients that I work with, um, I have to really delve into past issues um, around foods, around exercise, around their own mental health. Um, I by no means work with anybody that has any serious mental health issues. Um, but there are, you know, cases of low moods, anxiety, body dysmorphia, that sort of thing floating around that I have to take into account um, each and every time I converse with the client, um, whether that's in person, whether that's in a weekly check-in, all these sorts of things I'm always having to think about. Um, and that's what I want. That's what I like doing. I like, I've worked, I've done some physique stuff and I've, 
find it a little bit boring, if I'm honest, if I'm really honest. Um, it, I like doing it because I know I feel like I know what I'm doing with it. Um, but I feel like it doesn't excite me much. I don't feel like I get the. I don't feel like I get as much. I don't feel like I'm. I'm showing my worth if I'm just working with physique clients. Yeah. So, so your clients are kind of going for that more holistic approach, are they? They're they're looking for a change in their body, fitness, health mindset, and you're the kind of coach that's delivering on all those different aspects, I suppose. I think so. If you yeah, if you want to kick up the ass and you want to be told exactly what to do, I can do it but I'm better at putting an arm around somebody and saying, okay, this has happened. This is why this is happening. This is what we're going to work on next. Um, and yeah, holistic, I think holistic, maybe I think like a fully rounded approach. Let's look at what's happening with family life. Let's look at sleep. Let's look at stress. Let's look at what we can manage outside of eat more, uh, sorry, eat less, move more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, everybody knows in essence, that's what we should be doing. Um, but that's, you know, it's just, that's, that's, that's silly to assume that everybody can just go and do that. Yeah. So you're delving a little bit deeper than, than the, like you said, the binary way of it, of doing things, which is just, just eat less and move and get lean because there's a lot more deeper issues, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go into that. Um, is there a, sorry, in a, in a bit later, but is there any kind of, ways that you're dealing and training your clients differently than based on their you know their sort of own issues are you having to deal with different clients of different ages of different uh, mental states slightly differently or do you find the same sort of approach tends to work with all of them the only thing i'm doing with everybody is encouraging self-awareness um and asking people through reflection through check-ins to actually look at I don't give a shit if someone goes and eats a pizza at the weekend and gets pissed. It doesn't really bother me. But if it's happening every week and it's out of control um, and that's a real, it's really hindering their process, I'm asking them to work out why. Um, and that works for everybody. Yeah, so that level of self-awareness, which they might not have had before, is it, emo is it emotional eating? Is it habitual? Is it because you're tired? Is it because your hormone levels are out of whack because you're not sleeping. That works for everybody. Um, the amount of arm around the shoulder will vary. Based on yeah, the I was going to say that's uh, going to be a fine line for different people, isn't it, as to whether they need to kick up the arse or... A... I'm sure you found the same. I'm, sh I'm sure you found the same with like physique clients. Some people will want their hand held throughout the process. Some people will want numbers. Go away and do this. Come back. Tell me when you've done it. Tell me whether it's worked or not. And that's, in essence, a similar thing with my clients. Some, some of them, some of them are very happy to, to go away and do and do what they're doing with my guidance. And some of them do want a, their hand held a lot, and that's that's yeah. fine. Um, but it's taken me a long time. I've been PT now since qualified in 2013. I was a little bit late to the game, um, but it's taken me a long time to. I feel like I can get a grasp very quickly now of what a client wants and needs um, and how much of my attention they require um, quite quickly now. Yeah, I tell you, let's just, just fuck it. Let's just go straight into the mental side of things. I think that's kind of where we're, where we're heading and leave the aesthetic things maybe till later. So when you get like a new client um, or you're working with someone for the first time, um, what's your kind of first steps then um, into make sort of making a path and making a plan of action rather than just saying, right, what are you eating? Let's change your diet. What are you doing with your training? Let's change that. Cause you're looking obviously a hell of a lot deeper than most trainers. So what's your kind of first steps, I suppose, when you get them in front of you? First things first, I want to know what they're doing at the moment. Um, that's really important to know what they're doing right now. Um, do they have any approach to their training, nutrition, sleep management, anything like that? Are they doing anything at the moment? Um, because if they are, um, great. What you don't want to do is overwhelm people instantly. Um, this is why, you know, when you see people selling like, um, meal plans that are just, that aren't tailored to anybody and saying, eat that. It's like, 
I don't want to do that. I don't know what people like to eat. I don't know what people's eating habits are. I don't know how many meals they eat. I don't know what they like. I don't know what they dislike. So I try to work out exactly what the person is doing at the moment and then work around what they're doing at the moment and slowly, slowly drip feed changes. Um, so they're not completely overwhelmed. Um, how do you get I have, done, I have done in the past as a, yeah. as a new some, people, some want it, don't they? But most, they're not going to adhere to it. I can normally tell straight away whether they would adhere to it. And I feel like I'm now confident in saying to somebody, I'm not going to do that for you. That's not what you need. That's so not what you need. What, what part then does the, the mental state come into it then? So you've looked at their what they're currently doing with their training nutrition and what, what, when do you kind of introduce finding out a bit more about their, you know, psychological issues and mental health or is this literally a, a drip free process as well? I think so. I don't, that, it's not going to be like immediately obvious. Um, typically as we go on, as I'm looking at what they're doing throughout their week, um, low mood can come across pretty quick especially in one-to-one -one sessions um as you know i typically get people typically get people at the end of their working day or at the beginning um so i normally get a gauge for what where people's heads are at during that period um so that's normally quite obvious quite early on um <clears throat> that, that will come across in the first or second check-in even um if somebody comes to me and says oh, i've had a really bad week this has happened. I have, if I look at what I ask on my check-in is, uh, what your energy levels like that can normally be a good representation of mood. Uh, what's your sleep been like good representation of either anxiety or whether they're worried about something, stress or depression. Um, <clears throat> what's your diet been like? What's your training been like? And typically if I get through those four questions and they're all, they're all perfect, then I can pretty much say they're all right, they're okay. Um, but within reason, if they've said one of them, I'm not sleeping, my nutrition's been well off, I've struggled to get into the gym, uh, my energy levels have been poor, then that's when we need to look at why. Um, because if, I, if I, can't, I can't help them, I can't, I can't help them with their training or nutrition unless you know everything, everything's on point. And then it's working out exactly how much Depending on where the head's at, it's working on um, how much of each of those parts we adjust at once. So it might be that, okay, just for next week, I want you to try and reduce your alcohol consumption. And I want you to try and go to bed half an hour earlier. And just changing those two things might like nip it in the bud straight away. It might nip it in the bud straight away. Um, it might be that I say, right, okay, I want you to try and reduce processed foods next week. Uh, and I want you to go to bed an hour earlier and I want you to work on this, which is going to affect your stress levels. So maybe next week, let's try some meditation for like three times a week. And it's just little tiny tweaks based on how many tweaks I feel like I'm not, uh, I'm not going to overwhelm them all at once. Okay. Um, that makes sense. You're looking for these kind of red flags without directly saying, how's your mental health? Have you got any issues? You're kind of giving them questions that are, loosely connected that you can start going hang on a minute there's something not going on here and then delving a little deeper rather than just like you said overwhelming them and going well what's your reason for wanting to change what's <laughs> what's going on in your head yeah i think so i think no, i'm not quali i'm not qualified to do that i'm not i'm not a therapist um i don't have a degree in psychology so i'm not i'm not there to do that i'm i'm able to facilitate an improvement in their quality of life based on what I've read and based on personal experience. So for my own mental health, I would say I have this visual idea of um, a bit like with the COVID alert scheme, like um, <laughs> a red, amber, green. So green, I'm, you know, I'm sweet, everything's all good. I'm skipping to work and I'm high-fiving John on the way in, everything's great. And then when it starts to go a little bit sour. Low five, starts... by the way. Huh? It's a low five with John. Like, oh, come on, mate. Hyphy doesn't watch this now. <laughs> we go through. We go through. And then, and then and if something's, uh, you know, something's not quite sitting right, I have control measures which I put in place. And I'm like, okay, don't go, don't go like too crazy, but it'll be like, okay, you're just going to go to bed earlier tonight. 
just start getting your sleep sorted work on how you work on sleep quality all these different things um you're going to meditate in the morning and then i have these like i slowly feed in things based on how bad my mood is it might be something as i'm going to journal i'm going to journal morning and night i'm going to meditate morning and night i'm going to not go out for a couple of weekends i'm going to avoid alcohol for a couple of weekends all these little things that you can feed in that are going to help before you've directly approached so i've got the selection of drinks here i've got seven up now oh, mate, um seven up cherry somewhere <laughs> one of the one of the better ones the um sugar-free one um all these little things that you can do to improve your mental health or your low mood or anxiety yeah. before you've even if i if i'm if i feel particularly anxious or if i'm, I'm having a bout of anxiety the first thing i'll do is cut out caffeine like immediately like reduce caffeine intake like it's massive for me massive like it's a massive thing so just all these little tweaks you can do um before you've even really delved into what's going on what's why are you emotionally eating why are you emotionally eating this case yeah all these they, they, they have like a knock-on effect you know <laughs> yeah what, what um if you don't mind me asking what what's kind of got you into this almost fascination or obsession with the kind of um dealing with the mental aspect of, of different elements of life. Is there anything that's triggered it for you or is it just something that you thought would be useful to your clients? Cause I know you've done quite a lot of, um, been doing quite a lot of research and studying recently into it. Well, I've been, I suppose I've been down my own path, my own journey of, um, with mental health. And I've sort, I suppose I've been through my own path of healing. And I think a lot of people that have been down that similar path will tell you that once you've been down it, you want to help everybody else <laughs> um, in terms of healing and get into a good place. <clears throat> um, and as you know, it's widely reported in the press that it's, it's only becoming a bigger issue. Um, it's saying mental health is only becoming more and more and more prevalent, um, typically in young men. Um, but I see it everywhere, you know. I see, as most people know, we work in we both work in Croydon. You walk from one end of the road to the other in Croydon and you're aware of um, mental health issues, vis visible, like visible mental health issues within the public in Croydon. Um, and what about the invisible issues? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's everything. And it's, it's only getting worse. So I suppose I want to help other people with it because of my shared, my, my experience. Um, and I feel like I've had to my therapist tells me off for saying the word work because it infers that I'm owed some sort of, uh, I'm owing myself some sort of gratitude for doing the work. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've worked. That makes sense. When she says it, it makes more sense. I've you, know, you, you deserve some sort of pay. Is that where you kind of go with that? Um, oh, you mean gratitude is in? No, it's in like when I, when I said, we'll come back to my therapist in a minute. We'll come yeah. Back. Um, when I say I've done the, I've worked hard on myself to improve my mental health. It in, is there's almost a bit of ego involved. Is in like I'm yeah. proud of myself for doing this. Everybody should be doing this because it's work. Um, but I see it as work, and it's it's it was a. I've seen my therapist for two and a half years, I suppose. I was about to say, if you rephrase it as as rebuilding. Um, it wouldn't seem as as impressive because if you can imagine you are a fully built I don't know a fully built person or fully built um, sculpture and then you've bits have been chipped away and you're building yourself back together then it wouldn't look quite as ego driven revealing, maybe. But, revealing layers <coughs> revealing or, layers yeah maybe that <laughs> that might be better yeah <clears throat> yeah revealing layers um, but yeah, yeah about two and a half years no one so, likes um, that. No, I know, I know, I know. Um, so yeah, I think that that was the sort of, I suppose, beginning of my healing process was seeing a therapist. That was my, that was my fourth therapist that I'd seen. Is he still with her uh, now or him now? Still with her now. Yeah, I was seeing her once a week for the first year. That then tapered off to once every two weeks, and now I speak to her over the phone like once every four weeks. Okay. Um, 
And it's sort of gone now from a therapist to more of a spiritual guide, I suppose. Um, she almost gives me things to think about and uh, she's given me like a reading list in the past of things to look at and things to understand. Um, and it's gone from one level of, might we say, consciousness to another. We're going deep here, mate, aren't we? Did um, you think we were going to go down this path? No. Um, do you, um, would you recommend it to other people? To, you know, myself, so. never had a therapist in my life. If, if there's people listening in the same position as me where I think, oh, I've got my shit together when I probably haven't, would you invest in a therapist to, like you said, reveal those layers? 100%. The the business we're in, would you tell would you tell somebody to go and train on their own? You wouldn't. You'd say go and get a PT because a PT or a coach is going to help you because they've got years of experience of picking apart fitness and nutrition and supporting people to get towards their goals. If your goal is to be mentally sound or yeah. comfortable or less depressed or less anxious, why the fuck would you go and try and do it on your own? And there's someone out there qualified to go and do it and help you with it. Yeah, I suppose it depends if someone's got, I suppose, the, the minerals to admit they need, they need that help because hmm. that's another story. And that's why blokes don't do it. Mm, that's that... why blokes don't do it. And, and, and my experience, and <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll sing the praises until the cows come home for having a therapist. Mm. But one thing people don't, wanna, don't want is to be told they need to go and see a therapist. Yeah. They do not want to be told. And when people are, and I didn't want to be told, and in truth, I should have seen one 10 years ago, if not more than 10 years ago. I wouldn't have been told. I would, I went, even when I was 28, 29, if anybody had told me to, I would have said, no, you're all right. I don't yeah. need to go do that. I got, I, told, go. I got told a couple of times with a, an issue I had a couple of years ago, a very big kind of issue in my life, which was, was life changing. And I never, I never went to see a, a therapist. Um, I suppose it's that kind of, element of denial I suppose isn't it where you think oh, I'll patch it up and um, it will kind of heal itself I suppose but yeah it's interesting to I know. that's what we do as men I think as men we want to take it upon ourselves um, I'm in charge I can deal with this I can look after this and we want to present this masculine exterior and to some extent perhaps I have tried to present that with muscles and tattoos over the years you know like I don't it's almost a physical embodiment of I'm, I don't need help. I'm yeah. physically strong. I can do this. Um, and I see that a lot in the bodybuilding and fitness model community. You know, it's a lot of, there are a lot, I've met a lot of potentially frail yeah. characters who yeah. are most. Yeah. A lot of it is pre it's prevalent and, and they're all, I'll be honest with you. When I went into fitness modeling, I thought everybody was going to be an asshole. I've genuinely did. I thought, Look at these guys. Like when I when I go backstage, everybody's going to love themselves. They're going to be assholes. And the first time I went backstage, I was like, "Shit, everybody's really nice. Everybody's really sweet, mm -hmm. and everybody's a little bit broken." Is the wrong word. Something's happened for you for, for anybody to get in the condition that we get into. Something has to have happened at some point for you yeah. to. I've, I've discussed this a few times on the on the podcast and there seems to be that two schools of thought one is you've come from a place where you want to set yourself a challenge and prove something to yourself maybe like you said you've gone through um an experience where you think right this is my way of getting my life back on track or proving myself and the other side is is where myself and a few other people have come from which was we you may have been the same doing sport to a reasonably good level and then an injury gets in the way and then you have to channel your uh, training into another sport and it just so happened that you landed in the world of the of the fitness um sort of competing but um before i forget i've spoken, I've yeah, I've spoken to my therapist about it and like we why do i do it what is it what is it this what, what am i getting out of it yeah and i've found it hard so i've had to dig deep and it's on the surface yes it's because i want to compete and I do want to compete and I love that nature of it. But why? Why do you have that need to compete? Mm. What is the need? What's it fulfilling? What part of the ego? I have, when I say ego, I don't mean you've got a big ego. I mean, the ego is uh, the representation of the self. This is how you see yourself. This is, this is a defense mechanism to keep you afloat. Yeah. What is it doing? What is the competition doing to, to satisfy the ego? 
because for me, um, the first the the first year I competed, I felt like I did it to get myself out of a tight spot. Mm-hmm. I was going out a lot. I was out a hell of a lot. I wanted to get myself on the straight and narrow. I felt like I couldn't contr- I couldn't physically control myself without putting yeah. in a control measure, such as you need to diet for sixteen weeks and stay in. I did it. I won. And then somebody, I heard a little murmur of somebody saying, I only won because of who my coach was. Yeah, and it, were you and I was like, I've got to do it again then. I've got to do it again. Mm-hmm. And I need to go and do it in another federation. Yeah. And prove that I can do it. Do you think um, um, social media has made this, the fitness world, worse when it comes to mental health? Or do you think it's just highlighted it more? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I have a funny, I have a really funny relationship with social media at the moment. <laughs> no, you're, you're on it, off it, on it, off it. I'm on it, off it, on it, off it. I, I think I was relatively early with my entry to social media. Um, I was on there quite early before I was PT and with fitness. I was looking at fitness accounts. I was posting. When I first started PT, I was quite big on posting on social media. This is what my clients are doing. This is what I'm eating. And I used to get the piss ripped out of me for posting photos of food. Meal one, now, meal two, meal three. Oh, I was about to post them a minute ago, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, now everyone's posting photos of food. This is what I'm doing. Here's me training. And um, Yeah, I remember yours. You were you and John were really hot on it. I used to it'd be meal one, meal two, meal three. And it was actually quite fascinating, though, in a weird kind of way. I think so. Now everyone's doing it. And now I've gone, like, I've gone the other way and I'm like, why is he posting photos of his food? Why is he doing that? And I'm always trying to, I drive myself nuts trying to work out what everyone's getting out of their social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and then when I get to that point and I'm like, just fucking delete it, just get rid of it, get it off your phone. So I have like a cleanse. It I is, have like a two day social media it's cleanse. It's time consuming, mate. I, um, when I started thinking about, about, yeah, sorry, go for it. It's time consuming and it's numbing. It's like you're not present. You're not present with what's going on in the room. You're somewhere else. So I'm like, get rid of it. Be present with what's happening here. <laughs> no, it's true. It's definitely true. Um, before we move on from the the world of mental health, um, have you got any? Have you got a book recommendation? Because you mentioned you had a lot of books recommended to you. Is there any uh, that you think that is the one that people should read? <laughs> yes. Yes. But it's deeply spiritual, and you're not going to read it unless you're ready. So if everybody's ready. And you feel like your you feel like your spiritual awakening is now after watching this podcast. And I have the book for you. the The author is Eckhart Tolle. If anybody wants to write that down, that's E C K H A R T E. Surname T O L L E. You can download it via Audible. But if you download it via Audible, he narrates it. He is German and he talks very slowly. So, just what's be it, warned. What's it called? Did you say it's that? It's called The Power of Now. Right. So, it's all about presence. It's about being presence. It's about consciousness. And it's about the ego. But in terms of... It basically identifies how depression and anxiety are all caused by not being present and not being conscious and being self-aware. And it talks about the voice in your head and the stories that you create in your head about situations. And it encourages you to become the observer of your thoughts rather than to become consumed by your thoughts. Mate, that is so true. You've literally just said something that the pennies dropped. I get the most anxious and this goes back to when I was at school when I'm not doing much. So when I'm, when I used to sit in the school holidays and that last couple of weeks before I used to go back, and you start thinking about, oh my God, I've got all this work to do. And even if I take a week off work, I get so anxious. I'm better when I'm busy doing things, filling my diary. And I think it's because when I'm busy, I am thinking on the job at hand. Today I've had a day off and can't really settle because I'm, like you said, I'm thinking about other things that aren't going on now. So I know, mate. I know. I know what you like. I know what you like. But we're, most, most people in the fitness industry are like that. Because we're all we're all hyperactive. We're all we're all. We, that's why we're doing fitness because we can't sit still. And it's like 
Um, I've only recent in the last two years have I been able to go on holiday and sit still. Oh, for I, that I reason. can't. For that reason. Read the book, mate. Let's help you sit still. Read the book. So that's one of that's his first book. Then he's got a second book which follows on. It's called A New Earth. It's deeply spiritual. But if you read it and you enjoy it and you can get through it, it has incredible lessons um, for life, for consciousness, for being present. And if you can get through that and become a bit more present, I promise you, you can change the rest of your life. Just by being a being self-aware I'll, I'll try and get it on audible i thought you were going to say something like daily stoic or something pretty normal but you went in deep um I got the throat straight away we need to um we need to come off of this seriousness before we go back in your Sorry, yeah. so i'm hoping this is going to feed really nicely and you're going to give me the answer i want um when are you listening to these audiobooks is there a particular time of day when you're listening to them when i'm walking alone not with the dog when i'm oh, walking give up that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping the dog was going to come up. That was it. <laughs> the dog's in. The dog's in. We can come up with a dog. Listen, I care so much about the dog that I cannot afford to have anything in my ears when I'm walking him. Because ah, you're in the being present. present. Yeah. Being present. I'm looking out for danger. And I'm enjoying the dog walk. Okay. That's good. That's good. So let's, um, let's go into the dog. I was going to go into it through your, your cardio because I'm guessing you're... You got a dog because you love dogs, or you got a dog to help with your cardio, or what came first, the cardio or the dog? I got a dog. Listen, I've got a dog because I love dogs, and I've always I've wanted a dog. I've always had dogs when I've grown up, and I had this dream when I did my first comp prep. I was like, ah, oh, I'm walking at six o'clock in the morning in the pitch black on my own. And I'm going, I'd love a dog. I'd love a dog. So we got a dog. He's a lazy bastard, and he won't get out of bed. If I he, he won't get out of bed at six o'clock, he gets up when Soph gets up. At like half seven or eight. If I the other day I tried to drag him out of bed at six and he growled at me. Like literally, I was like, "What am I supposed to do? I have to go and walk on my own again." A Dashen's like that then, because I had a Jack Russell Terrier Dashen and I got him when I was prepping, which again was a silly idea because they don't want to walk when they're little. But is that a Dashen trait to be to be grumpy and not want to get out of bed? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think they're very cuddly and very happy to be in bed. Um, when I do get him out walking, if I walk in past 8 a.m., he's great. He'll walk and walk and walk and walk, but he doesn't want to get out of bed. <laughs> no. He's not definitely not grumpy either. He just doesn't like getting woken up early. No, so, my, my dog used to um, wake up, crack a dawn, and then want to go straight out for a walk. And I think that was the terrier Jack Russell in him. And I remember going to the toilet in the middle of the night, like three in the morning, creeping through the hallway, and then standing on one of his toys. And they're like, <laughs> And you're like, oh no, because you know, no, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the signal to uh, to go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, so now he's great. He's like, he was a godsend during lockdown. Um, it, you know, having a third party in the house, being the dog, um, he was a reason to get out, get outside and walk. And he's he he makes us laugh every single day. Like he's a he's a little bastard, but he's a funny little bastard. Has he got his own social media? He has got his own social media, yeah. If anybody wants to give him a follow, it is at Longboy Lenny Dashen. Longboy. <laughs> and uh, does Longboy Lenny, does his fitness levels go sort of in tandem with yours? Because I know <laughs> when my cardio was going up for a show or a shoot, my dog's cardio was also going up because I was obviously <laughs> I was dragging him with me for more walks. He does get walked. Yeah, he does. He gets walked a lot anyway. Like I do walk him. Like I take him for big walks over the weekend. And you might have seen before. I get really pissed off when people go, "Oh, I bet he can't walk very far. He's only got little legs." And I'm like, "Well, he bloody can. He can probably walk further than you." Um, How long he you walk? Uh, he can do like an hour and a half, easy, like two hours. And everyone's like, "Oh, he's only got little legs." And I'm like, "Yeah, he's also got good delts. He's got really good shoulders. He's quite muscular. He's quite thick through the neck for a dashing." I mean, they're bred. They were bred to drag badgers out of holes backwards. So they're not. They're not there to play games. They're not a toy dog. They were bred. They were bred as hounds. And he's a hound, man. He will walk. He will walk. Does he want to play when he gets back as well? Because that used to be my pet peeve. Get back after an hour walk, and you're exhausted because you just want to eat, and they just want to play. It's so weird, isn't it? Like it's like they're like, right, what are we doing now then? He literally comes back through the door, and he's like, come on then. 
And I'm like, come on, man, just lay down. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's like ready to go as soon as he gets in. It's crazy. It's crazy. What does he want to play with? Is, there a, is it like a rope or a, or a ball? Or... Ah, me. Me. Not even a toy. He <laughs> just wants to jump on me. He just wants to pull me about. Stop he's still that. a puppy, though. He's still a puppy, so we'll see if he settles down. That's we'll not see. too bad, mate. I'm a, I still still need to need to want to whatever you want to call it get a get a dog, um, but we touched on your prep and also touched on the fact that you wanted to compete to give you something to sort of um, focus towards because you you can't stop obviously going out on the lash when you haven't got anything to work towards. And I know you booked a photo shoot the last couple of weeks <laughs> to get you back out of the uh, the habit of eating and drinking and all the other things that you're probably doing that you thought you know what let's knock it on the head for a bit. So. Um, what is the kind of first thing you change when you're going to get ready for a shoot? What did you change this time for anyone who's like, I want to get lean for, I don't know, Christmas? What's the first thing you kind of did? I stopped drinking at lunchtime. That's what I stopped <laughs> <Lunchtime. doing. laughs> When you're working. I'm not, I'm not a good advert for fitness models, am I? Um, no, that's, that's an exaggeration. I stopped <laughs> drinking. So like this was post lockdown. So we just finished lockdown. I was probably drinking every night, every, every night. <laughs> yeah. Every night, maybe, maybe every other night during lockdown. <clears throat> um, I stopped drinking at the weekends. That's what I would certainly do. My day to day diet during the week doesn't change much. So the, what I'm eating now, now that I'm not in a uh, shoot prep has not really changed very much at all from what I was eating when I was in my shoot prep. Um, I just stopped eating junk at the weekend. So, I would eat Monday, to Friday, prepped meals, five meals, six meals. Um, I'd prep three of those, three I'd make fresh during the day. Um, when it got to the weekend, I'd have three fresh meals and then perhaps a takeaway or a meal out, um, some red wine, maybe some beers, something like that. I'd just chop that out. Um, probably during the shoot prep, be much more focused on activity, push my activity up a bit. Um, but my day to day, my day to day doesn't really change. And, and that's something that I, since I started competing, that's something that I have kept in. My day to day is very solid. It's very nutrient dense and um, it's very good. Like yours is, I know what yours is like. I see, I see when you have your off meal, but your, your day to day food is pretty good. Most of the time, most of the time, like 80% yeah. of it. Mine's a bit bland. I probably choose from about four food groups at the moment. So as soon as my shoot's out of the way, I'm gonna gonna extend that as much as I can for for general health. But you said you have six meals a day. That surprised me. I thought you may have gone back to like three, like a normal person, or or is that is it just no. eating, or is it a time factor? It's a time factor, but my calories are quite high. Like I'm on like my six meal a day is like three thousand one hundred. So, like, for me to get that in three meals, I don't want to eat, like, three, three 1,000-calorie meals of nutrient-dense food. It's like that. Like, that's big. That's, that's big. Yeah, you're probably rushing between clients. And I don't know if you like me, but I like eating, so I'd rather eat more meals, I suppose. I hate these people who go, oh, I can't eat first thing in the morning. I hate that. Come on. I eat, like, that's my first thought when I wake up. I'm like, I'm going to eat now. Like, I know a lot of people intermittent fast or they save their first meal. Oh, can't do it. John does it. John, John eats his first meal quite late. I can't do it. I wake up and I'm like, all right, I'm going to eat now. No, I go to bed thinking about food, unfortunately. <laughs> this is another reason that I have six meals. It's because I can have one just before I go to bed. I've still got another meal to eat now. What's, the what's, your, what's your last meal, just out of interest? Oats. Oats and protein. It's I good. find it, it, it improves my sleep massively. Yeah. I have a car big carby meal before, before bed. It's very good for my sleep. Very I'm the same. So, um, yeah, so nutrition-wise, then you're just basically cutting out the excess calories and being consistent. Um, yeah. And activity stays the same. Training, do you make any changes at all to your training going into a photo shoot prep? No, not until the last, not until the last like week, week, two weeks, I'll taper off, depending on where I'm at. Um, I actually went in quite, I was quite aggressive into this photo shoot prep because I'd still come out the back of lockdown and I was acutely aware that I hadn't really lifted any weights. So over lockdown, I had like two kettlebells at home. I didn't have any barbells, any dumbbells. I, I was really careful not to lift too much weight. I wanted to give my joints a bit of a rest. Did a lot of functional work on the TRX, hell of a lot of press-ups, hell of a lot of planks, crunches, body weight stuff. 
So when we came out of lockdown, I wanted to like tear back into the gym. So I trained with a lot of volume. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons I was able to keep my calories for so calories were so high for so long. Um, my activity levels are enormous. So if I, it's very rare that I get below 20,000 steps on a working day. So wow. I, I never hit that. Yeah. So it's like I can get away with a lot. You know, how many um, calories did you go down to then out of interest? 3 1 was my lowest. Oh, wow. Three, one. Amazing. And I was that, but I, <clears throat> nutrition wise, all I did was I chopped out, I didn't even do that. I'm talking bollocks. This time out, I worked with John. John's one of the uh, coaches at my PT, one of my best friends, one of my best men at my wedding. Um, he said it was a bit more of a consultant consultancy role this time. Uh, we sat down at the start. We sat down eight weeks out, seven and a half weeks out, and I said, this is what I'm going to do, mate. This is what I'm eating at the moment. And we put myself at 2.8. So we started me at 2.8. And I came down. When I actually ate 2,800 calories, I went down very quickly. Um, <clears throat> and I said to him, I said, look, we can keep it at 2.8. Because I know what my body does now. I've done it enough times, so now I'm going to react. Keep it at 2.8. Push in a cheat meal each week on a Saturday or around my leg day at the weekend. Um, and I think I'll still come down and still come down and still come down. And it was still coming down at 2.8 with the cheat meal. So we pushed it to 3.1 kept the cheat meal in and we said what we'll do we'll get two weeks out and then we'll just pull the cheat meal and i'll keep coming down again that's amazing and i just kept coming down i just kept coming down i just kept coming down and that was a two thousand calorie cheat meal so <coughs> my question Fred, to you was going to be do you would you rather um eat more and and move and train more or, or eat less and sort of train less but i think you've kind of answered that yeah eat more train more eat more move more Definitely. If you, can, if, the, if you can keep your calories in terms of if I were to coach a physique client now, well, I am training somebody for a photo shoot now as it goes, um, keep, ca keep calories high as long as you can because it's going to psychologically, um, if someone feels more satiated with the food, as long as their energy levels don't dip off, as long as their performance isn't dropping off in sessions and in life. Mm -hmm. um, it's another thing to bear in mind. You don't want people to be falling by the way, wayside at work. I'm sure you found that when you've been doing prep before. I'm always oh, accusing, mate. It, it's, you know? it's horrific. Comp prep's another level where you have to say man up. But when it's something like a photo shoot, like I think it was yesterday and even today, I <laughs> feel a little bit lightheaded. I just have a bowl of cereal. It's not yeah. what I'm meant to be having, but I'm like, it's, uh, you know, I'm not competing. What's more important? Yeah, yeah you don't want to... And that's one of the reasons I... I, I played around with thinking about competing this year um and now if i'm honest glad i didn't um i feel like my clients do suffer when i compete my I'm clients amazing. don't get the best of me i'm not emotionally available i know you said part of the reason was you wanted to do a shoot was to clean up your diet and get your kind of mental state you know get you focused do you found did you find your mentality kind of changed at all through the through the prep or you just felt a little more driven 100%, 100% more driven, yeah. Like it's, when I do this, it's really hard to explain to people. When I, I try to, I try to uh, keep uh, an element of processed food or fun foods, I suppose, and some alcohol in at the weekends to maintain balance, you know? You wanna be sociable, you wanna enjoy those things, you don't wanna, you don't wanna demonize those foods, but they come with, um, they come with an element of, for me, they make me, they make me a bit sloppy. Mm. And as much as I enjoy having them, they do they keep me on the back foot a little bit. Monday, Tuesday, after a weekend of, if I've, been on, if I've had a few beers on a Saturday night, I'm a bit sloppy on a Monday, Tuesday. But if I'm prepping, certainly if I do an eight-week prep, for the first six weeks, I'm hungry. I'm like, I'm like ready to go. I'm ready to succeed. I'm ready to do what I work really hard. Um, wouldn't be until maybe like the last two weeks or week where I'm pretty tired and it starts to go back the other way again. But you probably find out with comp prep. Comp prep's a piece of piss for me, for me, until like six or seven weeks out. And that's when it starts to get a little bit tricky and you're a bit like, it's getting quite hard now, getting quite laborious. But up until that point, I'm sweet, I'm flying high, I'm good, I feel really good. 
does does a cheap meal or a few beers manage to have a, a knock on effect in the fact that if I go and have a few drinks or a cheap meal, I can't stop. I just keep going all night and then hopefully I can stop by the next morning. Or are you very like, I've had a three beers, that's my lot, I'm done? No, it depends. It, it depends. It depends on the night out. It depends on who I'm out with. It depends on what's happening the next day. It depends on how much sleep I get. If I'm out till three or four o'clock in the morning, I can yeah. basically write off. I can write off my diet the next day because yeah. I'm tired. I'm hanging, and then it's gone. It's gone to pot. If I have a few beers on a Saturday night, like one or two or three, I'm fine the next day. I can go back to normal. Um, I won't just psychologically write it off unless I absolutely feel like death. <laughs> yeah, no, that that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I've had a few too many of them over lockdown, so that was part of the reason why. The reason I'm doing a shoot is because I think you suggested it to me. So here we are dying for you. Thanks to you, but. I've ended up pretty lean and now I feel, I know when I'm in a good place because I start staring at food and Instagram. So as soon as you see my food page, like I picked up yesterday, it's because I'm, I'm in a good space because what I start doing is looking at things to do like days out. And I start messing with my missus going, do you fancy doing this, do you fancy doing that? And she's like, what's going on with you? And all it is, is I'm hungry for, for, for making my life exciting rather than just being gluttonous, I suppose, and eating everything and drinking everything in sight. There's no excitement yeah. left. <laughs> I've had to, over the course of doing these preps, I've had to like, that's one of the things I've had to cut out this time is do not look at food pages. <laughs> Start obsessing. That's when I've ended up, I wouldn't say I've ended up with disordered eating after shows. I've ended up having a rough ride for like a couple of months after before, after shows. Because as you like said before, it's a bit more extreme than doing a photo shoot. It sure is. Um, yeah. Um, so final thing then, mate, before we uh, ask you some stupid questions um, about you. Um, gaming, pro gamer or, or fitness model, which one is it? Um, at the moment, I'm somewhere in the middle, but pro gamer, I think anybody that is a true gamer watching this would probably possibly frown upon me because in all, in all honesty, I'm only playing Call of Duty at the moment. That's, that's what my life revolves around outside of work. Call of Duty, playing with the boys um, in Verdansk. Those people that have played it, you know, you know, you know where it's at. Um, so not quite pro gamer, but pro, and and pro is a very loose term. Pro is like literally like as as much as I'm a pro model, I'm a pro yeah. gamer. Is I'm a I like taking part, like much like the modelling. <laughs> no one's paying me to do it, but I can tell everyone I'm a pro. You get get Twitch, whatever it is. People can pay to watch you play, mate, or to watch yeah. you say you're playing. I think they would, out of like for comedy value, like when John and I play. But I don't think they'd be playing because we're good. It's a bit like it's like pub football. Put it that way. It's like pub football. We're we're there. We're having a laugh, but it's not particularly beautiful to watch. <laughs> I uh, I haven't played computers, mate. I must admit, I I binned mine when I was about sixteen. Um, and then I've got one again when I had a knee up, but I waste, I just up to about four in the morning playing it. Very addictive personality. It's bad, it's bad, isn't it? I get, I get a bollocking if I'm on it too long. She upstairs, she gives me a bollocking. She drags me off by my ear. She says, you've had enough now. How, how long do you, do you go on it a day? What's the, uh, uh the moment if, I, well, look, weekdays, I'm not on it at all. Really. I, if I'm honest, I'm at work, I'm at work too much. And by the time I've come home, like I said, I've got quite a big focus on sleep. So I'm always... I want to be off it by 9 p.m. for me to get to bed and get settled by 10. So weekday nights is no good. A weekend, I can sit down for like two or three hours at a time, maybe, give or take. Then my bum starts getting sore if I'm sat down for too long. <laughs> I know as soon as I get in my own place, it's going to be set up and then I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to... Uh, we stop talking about it, otherwise I'm going to, have to end up going online now and buying myself. Uh, in fact, what, are you, what console are you playing on? That's the biggest question. Uh, PS4. I'm on a PS4, yeah. I'm on a PS4. Um, right, so, um, most exciting part, mate. Have, right. you, uh, have you got anything that really, really grinds your gears that you want to throw into the gym and tonic bin? I have, actually. And it's, it's, going, to bring, it's going to bring into, a, it's going to round up most of the stuff we've been talking about. That is people that choose to do something and then moan about doing it on social media and it's quite prevalent it's quite prevalent this time of year because a lot of people are competing right no one's made you compete 
you've chosen to compete now don't get online and start moaning about the food you're eating because people are genuinely starving in the world and you've chosen to starve yourself you get on with it get in the bin <laughs> i can't even defend that because i've said that myself before what, what? i've probably yeah. done it i think I think I did it. I think I've done it. It's like, oh God, Stairmaster again. It's like, get on Stairmaster. Come you know, on. But most people are saying it, not because they want, like you said, they want something in return. They want you to go, oh my God, you're, you're so inspirational. I don't know what it is, mate. Um, Can't believe you're doing that to yourself again. Can't believe you're working so hard. Why are you so tired? Why are you doing it? That's oh, the reason. Just got to do it. Just that's got the reason to do it. I retired, mate. I started moaning about everything in life. It was it at the start of this year, and it was at the point where I wanted to stop moaning. But I paid a coach to train me, and obviously do my nutrition. But I wanted to eat more. But I was like, well, I've invested money, so now I'm just now I'm just moaning. <laughs> it's not just competing either. I see a lot of people doing it about a lot of stuff. I see a lot of people moaning about stuff on social media. So like you've chosen to do that. Now you're chosen choosing to moan about it. In front of everybody else, stop doing it. If you don't like it, stop doing it or stop moaning about it. Mate, you probably get it as well. People message me and they, they moan about something and you're like, why are you following me? People, yeah. some, you'll post something and people will start moaning on your post. And it's like, very simple. You just go unfollow. It takes two seconds. Block. Yeah. yeah. Don't look at it. Don't follow me. Mate, I, I, could moan. I could spend, I could... Human behaviour is everything I could throw in the bin. Things that people do. Well, but then, there you go. Mine's linked, mate. I, I didn't even think of this until about two minutes ago because I was I forgot I forgot we were doing these this section. But it's basically the people that have all of the gear and absolutely no idea in the gym. So I've got nothing against people that don't know what they're doing. Yeah, that's what we're here to do to help. But when yeah. people rock up with their lifting <laughs> shoes on. Yeah, and they go and do a bicep workout, and they've got yeah. like knee wraps on, like lifting shoes, bag, yeah. chalk, and they're going to do biceps. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Well, are they are they not understanding what the shoes are for, or is it just because they've seen someone else do it? I have no clue. It's frustrating, isn't it? I mean, you can't knock their enthusiasm, but you've got to knock whether yeah, just needs a little bit of help, doesn't it? I think, again, it comes back to that probably most of the people you're talking about are men and that they're probably, the, they're probably not asking for help and it's probably not, not wanting to ask for help. They, they, they either don't want help, they may, not either have, they may not want to ask for help or they may just think by wearing it they're going to get some sort of acceptance maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe I feel horrible putting them in the bin now. Maybe I should have put something else in there. <laughs> um, oh, well, fuck it. Um, <laughs> Oh dear. No, I've just said I've just said that I want to help people. That's like my calling, and then I've just slated human behaviour and what the thought people are getting out of it. But yeah. there you go, it there you go. Just be honest, be honest. Just say, look, everybody loved me. Everybody loved me for wanting to do this. Don't moan about it. <laughs> we're calling. We're calling out people that are basically <laughs> bullshit. Mate, they're sick, were they? They're from. They've got sloths on them. Look, I've, 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 just, I've sort of ready for bed already. Told you, I like getting, bed, getting, getting ready for bed early. You just wanted to show off your mobility, mate. That's what you wanted to do in your quad. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> the big big five, mate. This is uh, mine and Chris's, who's banished um, for good. Our favourite five questions. Did I, did I send you these in advance? Because if not, Seven. you're going to just, just make them up. So, your favourite alcoholic drink, mate? Lager. Which lager? Specifically, uh, Spanish lager. San Miguel. Oh, yeah. Ice yeah, cold. Nice, uh, in a nice tulip cup glass. Nice gold rims. Yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, it's good, yeah. This lager, I love lager. Yeah. Not a big gin and tonic fan, sorry, mate. No, but I, I love, uh, mate, I'll go through phases, mate. I love a lager on, like, it's definitely at an airport or a stag do. Always a lager. <laughs> um, Favourite food? Pizza. Straight up pizza. Every time. What topping are we going for? Meaty, anything meaty. If it's got the word meat in it, I'll have it. Is there a limit to how much meat you can get on, or just more meat the better? <clears throat> I think I'd. It annoys me when they put chicken on because the chicken goes a bit dry. Chicken, it could be meat, but like it's got to be sausage based or bacon or something like that. Yeah. But not not chicken. You can't. Is there a particular particular takeaway? Is it a Papa John's? Is it a Domino's? Uh, Domino's. 
I favour Domino's to Papa John's. There's a new place not far from me called Fire Away. It's yeah. somewhere oh. between... I'm, you know getting, them? I'm getting sent a voucher from that exact one. They're sending me a free pizza. Yeah. So I've still been waiting for it. So I don't know where it is, but... There's somewhere yeah. between... It's somewhere between a stone-baked and a Domino's. It's like a stone-baked base, but with Domino's level topping. It's good. It's there's, nice. a few, there's a few around the area, those ones. They're quite good around yeah. South London. Um, hang yeah. on. Favourite body part to train? Legs. Every time. I love it. I think, I think I get a better mind to muscle connection through legs than I ever do through chest. You've got some, you've got some meaty thighs, mate. I know that for a fact. Um, yeah. All right. What's your dream job? Now, I saw this question. I don't even know if this is a real job. I've just created it in my head. Ah, you can get paid for anything. Holiday tester. Mm. Do you remember Wish You Were Here? Yeah, I want to be a, I want to be a, the presenter on Wish You Were Here. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I think I look a bit too rough turning up, don't I? <clears throat> basically, I hate it when people go, create a life you don't need a vacation from. Like, no, bollocks. Like, it's so good going on holiday. Like, <laughs> going on holiday is the best thing you can do. Like, you go away, you're staying somewhere, someone comes in, cleans your room, they, they leave water out for you, you go to a bar, you drink, you eat food, the sun's out, you're not working, you're reading a book, you're in a pool. Mate, I've got it. I've got it. We had this last week, we had this a couple of weeks ago, Dean said the same thing. He said a blogger, a tra- I think it was a travel blogger, you just get paid to travel the world and just write reviews on places. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, but that's too much effort for me. I'd oh. rather just lay there. I'd tell, I'll, I'll review it when I get back. I don't want to be, I don't want to be doing anything while I'm there. I'll just, yeah, maybe do the TV, maybe the Wish You Were Here presenter. Then I'm, <laughs> I haven't got to type anything. I haven't got to type. I can just talk to camera whilst I'm there, going, "This is really good." Now, can you fuck off? I'm trying to have a drink. <laughs> wish You Were Here presenter. That's brilliant. And uh, <laughs> what's your favourite um, music to train to? Techno. I love techno, mate. Right. You know. um, two songs yeah. to the playlist. That is now live, by the way. If you type into Spotify, Jim and Tonic playlist, I don't know, you'll find it somewhere. It's up. Okay, add these bad boys in. Cyrez D, on, off. That's C-I-R-E-Z-D, on, off. For a okay. bonus bit of trivia, Cyrez D is Eric Pritz. Ah, uh, or the old, the old alter ego, whatever it's called. Yeah, his his other alias, his techno alias. Alias. The other, the other track, Adam Bayer. Yep. What you need. I do know that song actually. <clears throat> Give them a burn. Give them a burn. You always train to techno then. Yeah, most of the time. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to the Drum Code, yeah. Drum Code Radio podcast. Um. That gets me going, mate. That gets me going. I thought you were going to say podcast like listening to uh, uh, Eckhart Tolle. You... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen to yeah, educational podcast whilst I'm training. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the that's the main that's the big questions, mate. And uh, we'll we'll finish strong with um, you can summarise with uh, just one top tip for people watching this as to how they can uh, live a, a a happy life go to bed earlier that's it that's all i would say go to bed earlier that solves everything what what time are you going to bed obviously i've kept you no, you're, you're already late mate if you don't mind right. i'm already i'm already right. late i'll turn you off no. right um <laughs> um you no wait thanks for coming, coming on the show um at such last minute um hit up your social medias or, or maybe not your socials you don't want anyone contacting you do you want to let people know where they can contact you and become your second online client or a face-to-face client or just pick your if brains if you want to get if you want to get in touch with me if if i'm on instagram if i'm if you catch me on one of my on days it's at mk fit pt um you can find me on there and my facebook is the same so we're at mk fit pt um, you can find me on there. I might post. I might not. I might be having. A, I might be having an on day. I might be having an off day. But oh, you you can find me there anyway. <laughs> nice one, buddy. No, thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate it. And a lot deeper than I was expecting. Yeah, sorry, mate. I'm not sure if you were prepared for that. Oh, but, um, okay. Something to think about and a bit. Of a, I've given you a reading list to go away and work with. <laughs>
Bit of German, bit of German. Nice one. Well, I'll let you, I'll let you sign off for the show, mate. I'll let you do the, the close with whatever you want to say. All right. Thanks, guys. Like I said before, go to bed earlier. Now. See you later. <laughs>